Uh, first, I just want to thank uh, Police Chief Trevino and uh, Councilman Nuremberg. I I'm really proud to be working with, with, with people like that in our city who are willing to roll up their sleeves and, and, and get to work, find real solutions. And I think, you know, we hope that today is not just about talk. It's about action. We're going to do some things. So, you know, I want to just kind of go over some things I heard. If, if you don't mind, I'm going to just go over them real quick. I, I think we were kind of ahead of schedule, so I can eat up a lot of time. <laughs> so the first thing that I heard that I thought was really great was we got to have the will. There's always going to be there's always going to be this issue with us, and so we got to have that will. And I think I think we're seeing it in this room. We really want to to harness that. The second thing was just some of the great uh, suggestions that Ms. Cheever brought out today, which I really like. You know, take a food safety class uh, on the city, certified food handler, and so forth. And I think we can expand on that and look at, at some some programs right away, uh, and know that you know we have the will to do that. Um, the third is. <clears throat> and that's all it is, human dignity, right? I don't know how many issues I face at city council that, that simply deal with that simple issue. In the end, what we're here to do is to represent people. And what that means is it's representing their dignity. So, so I hear you. Uh, I think we all hear you. The fourth thing is businesses to partner with ministries, maybe even San Antonio Police Department, I think that's that's a, that's a neat uh, idea. That's that's really uh, you know something that we can explore, uh, see how we can create partnerships. Uh, that that's always a great solution. Collaboration, partnerships. Um, I, I really like that one especially. I really like this one. Public bathrooms. Uh, you know, many of you all know that I'm I'm an architect, and um, I've I've said it all along. There's there's nothing we can't fix with a little bit of good design. <laughs> And so I, I'm, I'm publicly challenging local architects to help solve this one. This is solvable. I know it is. We've got to have a solution for public restrooms, one that works. It's a design solution. I'm calling out, I'm calling out architects. The next one is related to what I do also, is, you know, disabilities. We talked about, um, you know, the, the, the issues with people with disabilities. Um, that's another big one. It's true. Uh, you know, a lot of the, 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 the problems we see uh, with, with, with people who, who, have, who have food insecurity have other issues as well. They have bad health. They, 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 they're certainly going to have uh, problems getting around. The night I spent at Haven for Hope, I saw something very simple like foot fungus. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but I think anybody can tell you that that could quickly become an infection and become a big deal. And then that person ends up in the ER and who knows what else from that point. So, you know, I, I think that that's really important. I'm glad somebody brought that up because, you know, accessibility is a huge issue. Accessibility really um, it, it dovetails nicely into, you know, what we call uh, equality, equal access. And, and we should definitely address that. The seventh one was discounted bus tickets. Great idea, really great idea. Um, I think you know that's something we can certainly uh, start implementing. Let's let's look at how we how we make that happen. Number eight, um, Haven for Hope satellites. What I like about that statement was that it, it was it's an admission that Haven for Hope is really doing something great, right? So we can model some great things, you know. So so I think that's great. Haven for Hope satellites. I think it's great. Great idea. I've had the privilege of having breakfast with with uh, Reverend uh, Ron Brown, and uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I got a lot of insight that morning, and I really appreciate your hard work uh, at Haven for Hope and all that you do, and know that, that there's, there's many people like Mr. Ron Brown at Haven for Hope, and you guys are, are an example here today. Um, we talked about the issue of how outside of downtown eating is difficult. So it's, a, it's an issue of proximity. And I think it's, it's, it kind of goes to that sort of idea of satellites. Uh, so, so we'll definitely be examining that, this idea of you know, how, how we address some of these issues. I think downtown, the biggest issues with downtown have to do with the fact that that's, that's where our city sort of our heart is, uh, the, 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 the most uh, dense part of our city. We have a lot of areas 
for, for people to, to exist. So, so we're going to have those issues. But on, on the satellite or on the you know, perimeter areas of our city, it does become difficult to, to address feeding the, the hungry. The last one was one that I brought up when I spent the night at Haven for Hope, which was hygiene kits. I love it. Um, I think we can do this. I, uh, Mr. Brown already has some hygiene kits. I think we need to we need to create, you know, a, a a a way to get more of these hygiene kits to these people. They 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 could really use it. I saw it that night. Um, I think we're going to start. I um, I want to say that we did discuss potentially starting something in, in, in um, Prospect's courtyard overnight where somebody can potentially go take a look at people with some hygiene issues uh, so, that, so that they can be addressed at overnight. overnight. And so that, I wanna say what's, what's really neat about that is that it shows how Haven for Hope is responding. They can't, you, know, you can't have all the answers all at once. I mean, it's such a diverse issue, but you know, they, they do have medical facilities they're just not open at night when people in Prospects Courtyard are taking advantage of Prospects Courtyard. But by listening to my experience there and how we could possibly have somebody there overnight, that's addressing part of that issue. So, so I want to say those are 10 things I wrote down. I know there's more. Uh, I, got, I got another note here um, from my facilitator and talked about you know, the, the misinformation, how it's per hunger is pervasive and increasing. Uh, and we got to share resources. Um, you know, that's, that's really, really key. We want to be partners. Um, and this is what's most important of all. Uh, you know, us at City Council know that uh, we're going to be looking into this, uh, not just the Quality of Life Committee, but, you know, we'll make sure we'll be talking to other council members, addressing this. This is a city issue, not a District 1 issue or District 8 issue. It's, it's a city issue. And we'll be addressing those things. So just a couple notes that I wrote down too. Um, yeah, knowing that there's not going to be any easy answers, I think this is the great start. Let's 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 leave with some takeaways. Let's let's uh, implement some things right away. Uh, want to know? Want to acknowledge the, the the great work at Haven for Hope and how how uh, amazing it was that it got start how it got started. You know, it got started with the compassionate efforts. Uh, of, of treating the evacuees from Katrina, from New Orleans, and the great work that was done. Mayor Phil Hardberger, Bill Grehe, Patty Radel, and Cheryl Scully know that, that, that there is compassion in the city. We're trying to, to find ways to make this work. So I thought about this a lot, and we hear about the Good Samaritan. And we have a lot of Good Samaritans in here, and I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. Good Samaritans should not have to be in service of the city. The city should be in service of the Good Samaritans. And what that means is we need to, we need to find ways to get you guys to, to, to help you do what you want to do, do, help you do the good that you do. And that's really important. So I just want to express that. But most importantly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with what my mother said to me when, growing up, and it's a Mexican dicho. Some of you might, might have heard this one. Haz el bien sin mirar a quien. Have you all heard that? In English it means, do what is right, come what may. And I would say, that's really a great message today. Um, one last thing I want to leave you with, and it's a, it's, it's a ritual that, that uh, me and uh, my great uh, council aide, uh, Jed Mabius, do every day, is we literally shake hands and we hug. And I, it's, it seems like a silly thing. And I wasn't a big hugger growing up. <laughs> but some of the best people hug. And I met Pastor Ron Brown, we hug. When I met Eric Cooper of the food bank, he hugs just like Jed Mabius. Really leans, in, leans into it. So just know, uh, you know, we want, we want you to, to, to understand that, that, that we do have some compassionate people here. Uh, we are listening to you. 
And today, before you leave, shake somebody's hand, give them a good hug, know that we're trying to do our best with this. Thank you.